Hello there and welcome to another video from Change Tips and Tools and it's me Phil the Brummie that hails from Birmingham England and this is a video uh, where I want to revisit the resource capacity template. Now there's a link in the description to the, the playlist where you can follow the step-by-step -step guide on how to build this template for yourself or you can purchase the template uh, fully completed from uh, the Change Tips and Tools Patreon. And again, there is a link in the description. And this video is particularly for people who have bought the, um, the template from uh, Patreon. And I just wanted to go through a few settings on here that they might not be familiar with. So first of all, when you first open the template, you're gonna get this security warning. And if I click on this, um, it's saying that some active content has been disabled. And the reason being is that we have macros in this and also we have Power Pivot, which is an add-on data connection. Yeah, so we've got Power Pivot here. So this is the reason why it's asking you this the first time you open it up. And if I click this for more details, it talks you through the fact that you've got a security warning, that there is active content and it might contain malware or other security hazards this is standard practice that it will warn you that this stuff is there um, so simply click enable content yeah if you click that once you've done it and you've saved it so, uh, and then reopen it it won't ask you again but if you copy and paste that file it will then bring up that that warning once again so that's the first thing that i wanted to make the point then the second thing is is just Remember that as far as entering the data, you've got your static data, so you need to enter your priority information, you need to enter your programs, your projects. These will then, you then enter your programs and the relationship between well, what projects are belong to each, uh, to, to a program. And then based on the project, is it, you know, what category does it fall under? And then you can define these categories yourself. You then need to define your skill sets. As far as the, the type, planned leave and unplanned leave, just leave that on the two, uh, the two, just the two. Um, you can't expand that. But then as far as the start and finish, you know, if you're doing this for 2025 when you're looking at this video, then set your, your start date as the 1st of January 2025 to the 31st of December 2025. And then put any bank holidays for your country, your national holidays here. So these are for the UK in 2024 that I've added some data in. You'll then need to define your resources. And again, what skill set? Are they generic um, or are they a named resource? So if they are a named resource, then they are not generic. But if you require a role and a skill set, uh, but you don't have a name resource, then you would use, you would then define it as a generic resource. Uh, and by definition, named resources have capacity because they're actual people, uh, and generic resources do not have any capacity because the fact is you've not filled the role with a named person. That's what that's for. And then you've got their standard hourly rate. Um, once you've defined that, then within the resource capacity, you then define for each of those named resources, and it'll only allow you to select the named resources, not the generic ones. What is, and it'll only allow you to select it once as well. So from a start date to a finish date, you then do your the working pattern for those resources, and it'll give you a total capacity in hours for a weekly capacity, yeah? So you need to define that, and then you can capture any personal holidays planned leave that you have or unplanned leave for those resources and then as far as your demand is concerned for each program project relationship with a start date you can set demand in hours based on a weekly pattern when does that demand finish what skill set you require and then you'll have a drop down to say which resources um, fulfill that that skill set and you can allocate people. That's what you need to do to populate this. Once you've done that, on the static data, yeah, so here, this tab here, you just refresh the data, 
which will then drive the view on your summary. That's how it works. So once you get the template, open it up, populate it with your information, put some, you know, populate your static data, your resources, your capacity, put some uh, demand in there, and then you will see, um, you'll see the results. Now, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, is that you may decide, and I've had um, uh, a couple of people where um, they've asked, well, how can we change the headings on here? And the answer is, yes, you can. So, for example, someone asked if we can change the programs to be business. So the way that you would go about doing that is you would, if so, for example, if we want to change the programs to be business, yeah, so it's a business area rather than a program and we then align the um, the projects to a business area. So the way that I would do that is I would click on protect. So that unprotects all the sheets and takes the protection off. You can then simply just change the heading to business, like so. And I would change it over here as well, just to be consistent. Um, and that's what I would change on there. I think uh, the other thing is then if I go over to demand is I know on the demand here I'm I'm looking at the program so again I would just change that to be business and because this is a pivot table that's taken from a a power pivot model is that I can just change the heading there accordingly and then on the slicer I would just select right click on that slicer there go to slicer settings and I would just change that to, as in the caption, to business and click OK. So I've now made changes to, um, to all necessary fields where that appears. And that's all you've got to do is then once you've done it, back on the static data, I just click protect and the whole thing's just reprotected again. Yeah. And what that means then is that. And if I refresh the data, I'm just going to click refresh and we'll let it refresh. Is the whole thing should work fine, not a problem. And there you go, I've refreshed it. If I look at demand, I can see that that's still the same business. Uh, that hasn't that hasn't changed. Now, the other thing um, I wanted to touch upon is obviously I built this on a UK uh, machine. The my regional, regional settings are set to the UK. Now, the date should change as far as the format's concerned based on your, your regional settings on your computer. However, um, one of the things that you'll need to physically change is if you want the currency to change, then the way to do that is again if I go to static data I'll click on protect I'll then go to resources and I'll literally with the the first row there on the resources I'll do shift control down and then shift control down to go all the way down to the bottom I'll do control one and all I'll do is on the currency settings the symbol I'll just change say for example I'm in the United States I'll just change that to uh, the dollar. So if I go United States, English, and then I've got the dollar and do OK, that's now changed that to the dollar. The other area I need to change it, so I'll need to go to review and just take the protect workbook protection off. Now that is where I'm protecting the structure. So it stops you from renaming the tabs which would break it um, and also stops you unhiding certain tabs as well. So if I right click here now and do unhide and I unhide the summary support and click OK, then all I've got to do is for it to affect these here and this view here is all I do is on that summary support is I'm just going to select this in here and on the pivot table analysis ribbon I'm going to have the field list and then on each one here so the first one I'm just going to go right 
Here I'm going to do field value settings. I'm going to select the drop down, field value settings, number format, and all I'm going to do is just change that to dollar. And do OK, and then do OK again. I'm then going to do the other one, which is the capacity cost, field value settings, again, number format. I'm just going to change it to dollar. You know what it states, English dollar there. And do OK. So I've changed that. And then the other, the other one that I need to change is if I go over, is I just take these two here. And you can see this, I'm going to just, again, with it selected in the pivot table here, because I'm going to do the drop down, do field value settings, do number format, change that to dollar as well. Do OK again. And then here, I'm just going to do the capacity cost, do the drop down, field value settings, number format, and change that to dollar and do OK. OK again. Once I've done that, I'm going to shut that down. I'm going to re-hide the su summary support. So hide it. Again on the static data, so I'm going to go on the review here. I'm going to protect the workbook and again just click OK. I don't put a password in. There's no password. And then on static data, just to re-protect all the sheets, I'm going to do protect so everything is now protected and you can see now everything's got the lock on um, and then again I'm just going to hit refresh data so if we go to the summary you can see without me even refreshing the data you can see the charts have now changed and they're now all in dollars like so so there's some quick tips on how to make some basic changes. I think the thing to be aware of is if, um, you know, is when you're building um, the sheet for yourself, when you're following the guides, is think about some of the categories. You might want to change some of the naming conventions that I've done around here. So you could do that when you're building the spreadsheet from scratch. And the only thing I would say to you is, Think about these categories here and think about how you would want them to work and you can adapt the template. Or if you want some further guides on how to further um, customize this to your own needs, then please let me know in the comments. I hope that that's been informative and helpful. Um, and uh, please remember to click that like, subscribe, and smash that notifications button for future content. And as always, I wish you an absolutely wonderful day wherever you are in the world. Please take care and I look forward to seeing you in the next video from Change Tips and Tools. Bye bye now.